Welcome to our first open community meeting and uh, with uh, Waka, and we're going to hear we're going to talk a little bit about what that is and what the mission is. And I can't thank you all enough for giving up some time. And I know there's a lot of folks who have contacted us who uh, wanted to be here tonight and can't. So just for your own benefit, there are probably twice as many people that want to be part of this initially. So we have a lot of energy in the room, um, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to getting this started and seeing where this whole, uh, is, where, where everything is going to grow to. And I think the, one of the things I want to be known for is we're going to start our meetings right on time. So, so uh, I know sometimes meetings tend to start late, but we'll start uh, right on time. So anyways, who I am, I'm Rob Fritz. And uh, I've been a Wallingford resident, I think, when my wife and I were married uh, 38 years ago. I didn't grow up in Wallingford. I grew up in Derby. But when we were married many years ago, I worked in New Haven. My wife, wife worked in Hartford. We were trying to figure out where to live. And we visited a number of towns in the central part of the state. And we walked down Main Street in, uh, North, uh, in Wallingford and the downtown and the train station. And we just choked and we said, this is the place. So we've been here ever since. Actually, our first apartment was uh, on the Bunton and Lyons building, which is now a uh, couple, one building up, Joe Bay, I think, owns it right now. We lived up in the third floor. There's an apartment up there. And all the walks through Choke in the winter and Kaplan's Market, and Sim it, it was wonderful. We've lived here ever since, and we love the town. Um, and uh, driving through the town, I don't have to tell you how much creativity and culture there are in our town. The businesses, the hobbies, the clubs. The celebrations that we have now. Um, but a lot of times I'm reading about these in the paper and, and I'm, 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 not on, uh, I'm not real active on Facebook so you have to apologize uh, or I will apologize for that but um, uh, I'm reading in the paper and I'm saying oh geez I wish I knew about that. I wish I knew about this. Um, so uh, we're sitting around, I'm, one of, I'm a member of the EDC uh, in, in Wallingford which is the economic development and we were sitting around one day thinking you know, what do we want to do to help develop the downtown and, and kind of organize all of the existing businesses and art and ho hobbyists that we have in town? How do we organize all that energy? And how do we expand upon that? You know, maybe have festivals and all sorts of wonderful things in town. Bring some artwork into town, you know, large sculptures, all those types of things to make it even more beautiful than it already is. So one thing led to another, and we kind of formed a, uh, a small steering committee. And on that steering committee is myself, uh, Tarn Granucci, who's sitting over here, Jane Fisher, who's sitting back there, Allison Katie, who's over here, and uh, Allison is at, uh, um, Allison, you're, you work at Choke, but I'm trying to think your, your title? Director of Strategic Planning and Communication. There you go. Okay. And, and Jane is the director of the library, and Tarn is responsible for the Wallingford Magazine, has been a longtime advocate of literacy. Uh, Liz Landau is also on the steering committee. Uh, Liz is one of those folks who, uh, is an plays an instrumental part of the town, but you might not have ever met her. But all the celebrations that take place in Wallingford, <coughs> she she's heads up most of that, uh, most of those efforts. And uh, and then Mary Ellen Eccles was is also a part of our committee as well. Mary Ellen's well known in town for all the wonderful theater productions that she she, she puts on. So we've been meeting on and off for about a year now, and um, trying to decide how what do we do, how do we get this started, and what's our mission, and what do we want to accomplish. And um, we finally decided, uh, after all sorts of different uh, tangential ideas, let's keep things um, simple to start off with. Let's cut, get everybody in town together. And we want to understand what their needs are. How do, wh what are their interests? Because uh, I had a little booth at Celebrate Wallingford. I had a lot of people come up to me and uh, say, this is great. We need to, you know, they want to do things, but they don't know how to do it. So that's what we want to do initially, is to be that, that central depository where everybody can go to, to get the information, to network. If you don't know, call Waka, and we'll hook you up with the right people. We'll have meetings. We'll brainstorm. And we'll organize all those ideas. There's a lot of businesses in town. There's a lot of people who perhaps have an interest in, in promoting the art, but don't know how to get involved. So that's what we're going to be. That's what our initial mission is going to be. And you know, I, I think initially we're going to get everybody together, get a website, get get uh, everybody on a list, have regular meetings. We can then branch into different areas, and we'll determine what those are based on a lot of your ideas tonight. Okay. So this is the first meeting. Maybe we'll have monthly meetings or bi-monthly meetings to start off with to get things started. Um, but we want to make sure we serve everybody in this community. We want to make sure that you're you feel engaged and that you feel that you're, you're really motivated and, and make this town even better than it already is, okay? Um, 
So uh, I'll, I kind of I think I explained who we are and what our mission is, um, and I want to introduce. Well, first I want to mention Sally. So Sally's here, and she has an art show that she wants to promote and announce. So this is exactly what our mission is: is to help people network and get the word out. So Sally, why don't you stand up, introduce yourself, and talk a little bit about what uh, what your program is? Sure, happy to. I'm Sally Tremaine. I am uh, one of the people who is organizing an event as part of the Wallingford 350th celebration this summer. Hopefully all of you know that Wallingford turns 350 this summer and we're having a week-long celebration with many, many, many activities throughout the entire week. Tuesday of that week is, has been designated as Women's Day and the Wallingford Community Women, of which I am a member, um, is doing a couple of activities, including a tea at the Victorian Inn. But more relevant to this group, we are holding an art show for Wallingford women artists. Uh, this is an opportunity for any of you who are artists or people that you know who are in any form of art, uh, you know, sculpture, weaving, pottery, uh, you know, painting, drawing, uh, whatever, um, to show off your works. Uh, we will also be um, borrowing a few pieces from uh, the Historical Society uh, from women uh, in Wallingford's past who were artists, apparently many of, several of whom anyway, were relatively famous, which I didn't know about. So it will be a, a wonderful show. It will be that Tuesday night, June 23rd. Um, it will be in the Choke Dining Hall. Um, anybody who wishes to display a piece of artwork must fill out an application. Um, the application forms are online on the Wallingford 350th website, or you can send an email to wallingfordartsandspirits at gmail.com, and I'll leave this in the back if anybody wants to do that, and then I can actually send you an application. You can submit up to three pieces. We'll probably, depending on how many pieces we actually get, uh, pick one or two per person to display. Um, we, the evening will also feature a tasting from Gouveia Vineyards, uh, the Cider Company in town, and Center Street Brewing Company. So it should be a really fun evening at Choate, and I hope all of you artists We'll figure out something that you want to have uh, on display. Excellent. If anybody has any questions, I'll hang out for the meeting. That's wonderful. And um, and as as we um, over the next month or so, we'll also have some more contact information. Uh, we do have Waka. I set up a, an email account, which we'll get to everybody because one of the things we want to do tonight is to get everybody's contact information, so we can email you. And we have some wonderful talent on in our steering committee. Um, you know, we have. People like, we're blessed to have people like Allison, who is, you'll see in a minute when she takes over the meeting, has a skill set that is unmatched. Um, and certainly Jane Fisher back there in terms of organizing and promoting and Tarn, and, and with, especially with the literary. Um, we want to make sure we address, when we think of art, and that's one of the questions that I had when I was at Celebrate Wanford, I had a whiteboard and it said, what does art mean to you? And I was there for two days, I don't think I had a single child or adult for the, for, for the most part, not contribute, and Allison has a picture of it, to that whiteboard. There was no room left up on the whiteboard. And, there's, and I still have that, and we're gonna hopefully, at some point in time, if we have a building, it's gonna be hung for, in perpetuity, and you'll see all of the thoughts. Everybody has what art means to them. It could be, people think of visual arts, the painting, or, or music, and, but there's literally, it could be cooking, it could be horticulture, it could be knitting. Whatever it is to you um, is important, and we want to support that. because And there'll be a lot of cross-pollination, I'm sure, at some point. So that's what we want to do, is serve all those interests. And again, I've been blessed to be uh, with all these really talented people that have been on the steering committee. Uh, it's amazing the talents that people have that you're unaware of. So um, I've been blessed. It's been a wonderful time working with them. Oh, Allison put it up there. Um, we have a little banner, uh, which we don't have tonight. And I, I'll have this at, at some future meetings. We'll bring this in so you can see it more carefully. And I, I bet you I could have put five of those up, and they would have been filled completely. So we'll see what happens next year. But again, I've been blessed to work with some wonderful people. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. And um, it's just an exciting time. So without further ado, um, I want to, uh, you're really here to uh, 
to listen to what Allison has to say and get your ideas on this paperwork and get things moving. At some point in time, we should probably have some sort of a, uh, a pad that people can write their contact information. You can write it, your name, your email, a phone number, one or the other, but just some way we can get a hold of you and keep the information flowing to you. And as soon as we get a web website set up, et cetera, then that'll be the, the central depository for everybody, okay? So thank you very much. Here's Allison uh, Cade. Thank you. Um, wow, you really set me up for success here. <laughs> oh, you were, you were, you were, you were. Hope I can deliver. Um, well, okay, I'll put the pressure back on the group here because this is what all the kids came up with. I expect that our walls are going to look something like this by the time we're done tonight. So I want everyone's participation. Um, I hope everybody will further ideas out there. Um, as Rob said, I'm the Director of Strategic Planning and Communications um, at Choate, really just here to facilitate the conversation. So um, before we get started, I just want to kind of put some boundaries around that. I, I want everyone to feel like all ideas are on the table. There are no limitations to kind of what we can dream here. Everyone's opinion, everyone's input is, is valuable. And um, there's no valuation that is or explanation that's necessary. Um, we're kind of starting from a truly blank slate here tonight. So um, just want to encourage everyone um, to participate in the way that they feel comfortable and to dream big. Um, I thought maybe it would be good just to get our juices flowing. I'm going to ask Jane to come up and be our scribe. Um, with just kind of a little bit of brainstorming, what is art? What is art to you? What are the characteristics of an artistic community or a community of, that supports culture? Um, and we're just going to kind of start going here and see where this takes us in I've got a few exercises that hopefully will bring us to a point where we can kind of see ourselves um, gathering around some major ideas. Um, it doesn't mean we're going to have a, a hard and fast plan coming out of this, but hopefully we'll have a lot to work with and it will help to guide us um, as Rob said as we continue to meet and move forward with these conversations. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> what is art? What, um, let me put it up here, sometimes it's easy to look at. Uh, what are the characteristics of an artistic community? What re represents culture in a community? Uh, I'm a local realtor. My name is Deb Jaffe. I'm also an artist, and I have a degree in furniture design, and I always wanted to be an architect. So, like, I see a community where architecture is celebrated, and I don't feel like it is to the degree it could be, because on just Main Street, just coming up to the library, you have, you know, craftsman houses from Sears, mid-century modern, old Victorians. I mean, that's something that can really be celebrated. Architecture. Other thoughts? I'll throw one in to start off. Uh, it's whatever evokes your emotion. Mm -hmm. It's an expression of ideas. A desire to add beauty and meaning to the human existence. Mm -hmm. Anything the man can create. You didn't get the last one. Anything the man can create. And the body and the soul and the spirit. I'm going to get that. Can you get, try to get the board a little bit more? <laughs> I think art, it triggers us the creativity is required for anything in life, be it a practical everyday life or doing something larger. I think creativity is always the seed, and that's what art triggers off. Practicing art or viewing art, either way. Yes. I think art expresses what's in the heart like words express what's in the mind. Mm -hmm. Or speech. Mm -hmm. I think it's innately human, so it's a part of the human condition that we create and we see the possibility that's our thing. I'd like to think that an artistic community would be one that was accepting and encouraging of all expressions of art um, by anybody within that community and offering opportunities for that to be encouraged and expressed. This is uh, very similar to what Sally said. I, I see art as a gateway to compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
art can be a reflection of nature uh, as well as the nature of humanity, the human experience. Need another pad. Right? Anyone culture, I think it, it it expresses diversity. Mm -hmm. I have one more. Things that make you unexpectedly pause and reflect. Would you mind saying that again? You were fuzzy for me when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Things that make you unexpectedly pause and reflect. Thank you. It's a way to process your experiences more fully than if you were just going through them. It's one expression of joy. Mm -hmm. Something that can be brought to the next generation. Mm -hmm. It's important because it's being lost. Mm -hmm. I was going to say something similar that it's it's a conversation across generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's also an expression of craft. You know, in the doing of it, you express not just a need to existential need, but it's an actual physical making. Yeah, that expression of craft. Physical making. You might want to add the word art. Yeah. <laughs> Very great intro. <laughs> It's a way to capture and preserve precious moments in time. Anybody say it's a way to communicate? Yeah, it's a way to communicate. I think that's why the community thing is so important, mm -hmm. because that's what's going to bring a community together, perhaps, by, again, encouraging different expressions in different ways and providing that community, that place where it's acceptable and, and uh, it keeps going to be encouraged to, to do that, whatever it is. I'd say it's also something that can define a community to the outside community. So the art that's unique to that community, so here in Wallingford, can help define how, what, what Wallingford is relative to other communities. Yes. Yeah. Um, I consider the ability to create something out of nothing to be a genuinely magical act. Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact. In a broad sense, uh, telling the story of the human experience. If you are moved to add anything to this list at any point in the evening, please feel free to do so. There's going to be markers here. Um, this is an equal opportunity participation event, so please, please do that. Um, okay, so we're a little bit warmed up. We've got our minds thinking a little bit about arts and culture in our community. What does it mean to us? Um, the goal for tonight, as um, Rob mentioned, really is to just get some ideas out there, get some feedback from the community. Um, you know, the Waco group really has just been talking about how we can promote arts and culture, um, things that are already happening in Wallingford, but that's not necessarily where we need to limit our uh, thinking for this evening. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of run us through what is the basic um, structure for brainstorming events like this called the SWOT analysis. Probably many of you have done this. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, I wasn't sure what kind of sized group we were going to have tonight, so I wasn't quite sure how to how to do this. I think we'll try to continue to go on this path that works really well when we can all participate in the conversation, um, but I'll try and keep us um, 
on a nice tight schedule to get you out of here set by 7.30 and hopefully get everything done that um, we'd like to. So um, I'm going to move 12-year-old um, Annabelle Katie's artwork here on to um, our next, next idea. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty straightforward. This is um, a way we can kind of pat ourselves on the back. Um, tell me a little bit about what's great about the arts in Wallingford. What's going on? What's, what should we know about? What do we do successfully to support arts and culture in the Wallingford? In Wallingford? This can be big ideas, small ideas. Um, yes? It was uh, Saturday mornings with poetry. That means at the library. There's a, uh, a WPL, uh, WPL Reader's Theater, which means monthly. There are other theaters in town, of course. Yes, the collaboratory here at the library is sort of exposing the entire community to all different kinds of making okay. and teaching. Mm -hmm. The Wallingford Parks and Recreation has a very robust art program. They have an after-school art program in the schools, which was not there before they started it. And they also have art classes in their uh, center. And all these programs are very, very affordable. So they, I think they provide, uh, they sort of provide an art center to the community. Yes. Uh, the places like Splat and uh, so, Words on Wood, and then there's the other one in there. Perfect. Yes, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I knew what it was. Um, but those are wonderful opportunities for very non-artistic people like me to be able to do something that I wouldn't otherwise feel comfortable doing. I think that's really nice that those kinds of places are here and apparently doing very well. The Wallingford Senior Center also has an artist guild at least once a week, and it's open to any members to come in and uh, exercise their skill or one of these. Um, and we have classes occasionally, and we have shows too. So there are fairs, there's art shows. Um, I want to mention Etsy too, but I think someone else could come. Um, yes, the um, Wallingford Garden Club. Mm -hmm. We've been going out to the senior centers once a month. Mm -hmm. And we also been doing some work at the senior center, doing painting and getting the poetry grouped together to match the plants, the poems, and the artwork. Mm -hmm. The Celebrate Wallingford event has a craft show on it, which is always a highlight. Yes. It would be nice if there was more local Wallingford artists there, but it's usually a good one. Wallingford Community Farmers and the plants that they have up by the Veterans School. The Spanish Community in Wallingford has a mariachi school. Oh, all right. Nice. Symphony. Mm -hmm. And that the um, farmer's market, there's always a lot of crafts available crafters. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll have um, opportunities for people to come in and they have like an artistic experience mm -hmm. while they're there, mm -hmm. that they can make something or do something. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's an ambassador for poetry, you know, which was uh, approved by the town council about four years ago by way of a Wallingford uh, Paul Laureate program which is sponsored and supported by this library. Mm -hmm. mm. Anyone else? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me, the Law and Birth Chorus. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. Dara Susan, she's behind the camera, but I think WPA mm -hmm. offers a lot of opportunities to Which includes a gallery and theater and TV making <laughs> and public art. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. There's also a writer's league in meets at the library. I don't know what they call this the league, but it's a group of writers community. Thank you. Them. 
We'll have to do double check all our names for appropriate <laughs> yeah, spellings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I was going to say choke, certainly, but you have already uh, all known our center, but all the uh, certainly the wonderful strengths of your office, but more importantly, community, involvement, and motivation. All of you. I think that's a huge strength that we have. So let's, uh, let's, go, okay. so, um, let's go down that road a little bit. Let's get um, less about the places and the groups and other strengths. Give me some other qualities that. Um, about arts and culture in Wallingford that are strong, positives, things we should double down on, think more about. Yeah. How about the Wallingford Symphony? We have a Wallingford Symphony. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> it's it's there. there it is. Yeah. There's yeah. like garden tours and like home tours in like. Sorry, I'm not being very articulate. But there's, you know, like, again, I'm all about the architecture. So, like, you know, there's so much beautiful architecture. Like, just a slow drive down Main Street is as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, just the neighborhood. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think everything that we listed shows that we have a community that takes initiative mm -hmm. um, and a community that owns its creativity in many different facets. So the more we can encourage everyone to participate, I think that's a strength that we can just keep saying, this is a great example of even what we're doing tonight. Great. Yes? Um, I don't know if it was mentioned earlier, but the kids have a game art show every year at the school, at the high school. Mm -hmm. And I've always had a good time going to see what the other kids are doing inside for my kids. Mm -hmm. so, you know, and I always thought that was a special thing. And I, don't, I didn't have it when I was a kid. It's not just high school, it's all the grades. Yeah, all the grades. It's all high school, but yeah. And again, private sector, like, you know, if you just look at shop windows, like dress, what's that? The dressing room. <laughs> the dressing room. I mean, it's just, that's really well done and beautifully executed. Just, you know, that little bit of initiative is great, too. Um, yeah. I was going to say, our history is a strength, but and the age of our town mm -hmm. history, yeah. as well as the variety um, of community from young to old. I think we have a, a broad range of community age and experience and history. One more, yeah. And the um, variety of landscape that mm -hmm. we have, that we have rural, and we have a downtown, and we have these little suburban mm -hmm. enclaves. So there's really, um, if you just go to a different section, you get a totally different feel, mm -hmm. which is nice to have that that variety. Yeah, we've got two more, and then we're going to move along. To keep this Billy Beaumont's holiday display should oh. be. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. yes. <laughs> to weaknesses, or as I like to call them, room for improvement. Um, what don't we do particularly well um, in regards to supporting and fostering arts and culture? I think it was something that was mentioned, I don't remember who said it, but we always find out about these things at the very last second, or they've already happened, and we see the pictures in the paper that something that did happen, and it would be nice if there was a way to I don't know, exactly, create a website or a newsletter or something so that it would be out there ahead of time and all of these disparate groups would have a place to then publicize stuff that is actually yeah. happening ahead of time. Yeah, that's very true. I have lived in this community for, my God, 27, 28 years. And I'm a professional artist and photographer, and I have always looked to New Haven for my exhibition opportunities, community opportunities, art community opportunities. I've always 
And that I found is the biggest weak weakness in this town. And I know other Wallingford arts people who I meet in New Haven, mm -hmm. and we all do stuff there. Mm -hmm. And part of the problem is, yes, we are very close to New Haven, and we are in the shadows. So it's expected that the struggle would be there. But at the same time, I think we can piggyback on our location close to New Haven and draw on the strengths and build a, a self-sufficient art community over here. I mean, I work for the Parks and Recreation. I'm the art supervisor there. I started the after-school art program. Before that, when my daughter was in elementary school, there was no after-school program. I had to take her home and take her elsewhere. I mean, I started the program. People just leave their kids in school an extra hour. They finish. We used to have enrollment problems when we had the children's program in the parks and recreation. We used to struggle to get 10 kids in the class. I started the after-school program in schools. Overnight, the enrollment went from 10 to 90. So there's a clear-cut need in the community. Rashmi, I, I put look elsewhere for exhibition opportunities, but when we get to opportunities, we might want to add your thought about our yes. proximity to the because that's what we call I teach art. I used to have a studio in town. I had closed, but um, there's not a lot of maker space. Like we have the collaboratory here, but I'm a jeweler. You can't use a fog, a flame there. There's no glass. There's no woodwork. You know, like a real maker space so you can make real art. Yes. We don't have a permanent exhibition space in town. Is there There's no public. You know, we. Everything is cycling, but there's nothing. We need a gallery. A gallery. gallery. You're welcome to come see ours anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think many places have have spots, but nothing in town that's just sort of serving. Yes, it's taken. I've lived in this town for uh, 25 years or whatever now, and. I, I watched it grow, and, and nothing is built. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was Wallingford. I mean, Wallingford, in my day, when I was growing up, was a sperm town. And who, who came to Wallingford? Nobody, unless you lived here, or you went to school here, went to church, whatever. And I think it's, it's still growing, and it's going to keep going. We have the weaknesses. Yes, we need more space for you know, crafts and other types of arts and so forth. And I have an idea for a coffee house, for example. Uh, but. You know, it's coming, it's coming together, and we should just be patient and keep exchanging ideas. And it'll ha it's going to happen. It's already happening. And it's great. We'll add that opportunities, I think. It's good. Other weaknesses? Yes, Jerry. I would just think about <coughs> who's not in the room, and that's probably a weakness in terms of uh, which communities we are not actively connecting with. That's Church, and uh, I haven't seen much of a music community in, in terms of you mentioned a coffee house or just like getting to know other musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen that a heck of a lot in my short time here so far. Admittedly, maybe I'm not looking in the right places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it, it speaks to like a disjointed thing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That there are people out there, but we're not trying to each other. the community audience. Um, some of our open hours during um, the holiday stroll, for example, a lot of people come in with a lot of foot traffic, and people will ask me, how long have you been here? And they don't even really know that we've been there for several years now. Um, so I, I feel like there's um, maybe a disconnect with the businesses being able to get um, in touch with the, the community as an audience. Okay. I, f I found that that happened to me as well. Yeah. No, they're like, did you just open? And I've like, it's yeah. been four years and no. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, well, this feels like a
like a lot of, I will say this is a very optimistic group. I have some yeah. groups that have a lot of weaknesses, so I like your positivity. And I think we'll just move along because what really happens is that um, your weaknesses, you know, this kind of comes full circle because your weaknesses are often your opportunities, right? What can we improve upon? What can we take advantage of that we haven't taken advantage of yet? Um, couple questions, you know, what could we, the Wallingford community, do better to support and foster arts and culture? What opportunities should we take advantage of? What ideas um, should we do to promote arts and culture to visitors, neighbors, residents? Some of this has been touched upon. It's okay. We can double down on, on those ideas. Um, let's, let's keep going. Opportunities. Yeah. There's a huge volume of box stores that have gone out of business this year, which is, you know, not great for our community, but if we could have you know, exhibition space there, you know, something that's static that will bring people in maybe once a week just to showcase that these are available and that Wallingford is actually a really great place. So that brings to mind in New Haven how they have the, um, exactly. the storefront exactly. project. So they would have these empty spaces and they would have an artist come in and do an exhibit in the window or use the space for a short period of time. And then if they were successful there, then they would have the opportunity to rent the mm -hmm. space out at a reasonable mm -hmm. amount. So it was like the um, people who owned the buildings worked with the town to provide these spaces for artists to sort of get a start or even just for publicity. Mm -hmm. publicity. And then it made the town, these vacant buildings mm -hmm. just look nicer so the community was involved. They took exactly. um, notice of it mm -hmm. and it really, it helped it helped with the whole artistic community and the public community, like in New Haven. It was a really great thing. And a lot of those industry. places ended up getting rented from just yeah. that exposure. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I they're smaller storefronts yeah. than what we have here with big box stores, but anything is better than nothing. Yeah, even just a display. In New Haven, I think it was the Open Studios event, which single-handedly got the entire city rented within uh, five years so yeah. I'm not saying you know that is a mammoth event but we could have like an art weekend in which mm -hmm. you know people could be invited to show their work in storefronts or empty buildings or any artist local artist who may want to open up their studio and call it art weekend or something that's right we're dreaming big so and have yeah, an art up here. Yeah. also with some of those empty spaces you can have what the maker space as well. And that way the building's not empty. And also like they do with the hubcap where they rent out like office space in a like meeting rooms or separate to rent out those places um, where you can share the space as well. So it's not so much of a rent on one person. Sure. Yes. Um, I don't know if I'm repeating this because I can't hear. I have hearing aids and I can't hear. But Cheshire has a, an art week, and they meet once a month in the library, and they have a different artist in different, uh, you know, acrylics or whatever else. And he does a demonstration, or she does a demonstration, and it's very, for the artist, it's very good, it's very informative, and it's fun. Great. You have, you have an idea you wanted to share? Opportunity? Oh, house? Coffee house sounds like oh, a yes, opportunity. Yes, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I I can remember those days back in the 60s or so when there were coffee houses all over the place. And I organized one in West Hartford many years ago. And it, it, it was a summer long thing. And it was wonderful where, you know, different performers got together and played folk songs or their own compositions or whatever. Primarily it was guitar, you know, maybe piano or whatever. but. I just, you know, I can, I can envision, you know, like tables and chairs and maybe some refreshments and, you know, different people getting up and playing. I think it would be great, kind of an open mic maybe. Um, I don't know where we could do it exactly. A place like the library would be. Yes. <laughs> I mentioned, by the way, I mentioned it to Julie not too long ago. And yeah. she says, yeah, I've heard that idea before. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't get any. <laughs> That's all right. We're not constrained by anything yeah. right now. We're dreaming. So no, we're no, I understand. It I'm just saying, I think, you know, uh, you know, it's a good way for musicians. It's not just about, you know, crafts and painting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it should be all of it. You know, and music is certainly a big part of it. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Um, building on that, just a regular open mic night for either musicians or people who have written poems or stories and want to share it with their community. Village, village kind of um, thing. Public artwork 
and community interactive artworks or art experiences would be nice. Um, at Celebrate Wallingford one year, we just did a really simple thing where people wrote on a tag what they liked about Wallingford, and then we hung it from a piece of fabric on a wooden like branch, and everybody loved it. And we still have it up in the studio, and people are just drawn to it all the time, and something like that that people could like fall in love with the town, but also have an artistic experience at the same time. Would be nice. I've got two people, two gentlemen in the back, if you want to. Yes. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> to build on the Cheshire statement earlier, um, I was thinking of it because it kid moves because of like kids going to town for sports and competitive things, but not necessarily in the spirit of competition, but um, to cross pollinate art leagues or community um, groups. like put together like traveling shows with other towns, bring them here, go there, and just kind of like have like a legally, you know, to use the sports mm -hmm. that of, you know, visiting art communities where you can kind of like say, well, if it's coming to town, come see their artwork, et cetera, and vice versa. Uh, a big opportunity would be night, the uh, time of day. That I know Connecticut closes at eight, <laughs> but uh, a lot of people in the creative world are slightly nocturnal, <laughs> perhaps promoting things that are later. Okay. I know you want to get out of here by 7.30. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a very strict curfew, so we can serve <laughs> Yes? Um, <clears throat> one of the things that would be nice is uh, I, I don't have a strong art program uh, where I'm coming from. I'm not from Wallingford. Uh, but if there was a place where uh, people who would be willing to share their talents with young people in town, so some of the people who run youth centers can connect you with, mm -hmm. that would be terrific. Yeah. Um, a place for Eagle Street Art might be interesting. Or I didn't catch that. Eagle Street Art. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a really big event tomorrow night called Raw at the Oakdale that has a lot of these ideas. So if you guys are interested in that. Okay. It's everything, it's dance, it's singing, it's music, it's hair, it's mm -hmm. fashion, it's artwork, it's okay. everything. Okay. And it's tickets, it's mm -hmm. tickets for yeah. oh. who's, who's sponsors it? It's, it's their event, it's RAW, it's the company. Uh, R-A-H? R-A? Like RAW, R-A-W. RAW, real artwork? No, I mean what you're saying. Yes. I mean, if we're going to go really big, let's go big. <laughs> you know, I, I come from Buffalo, New York, and we were um, fortunate to have art festivals, multiple ones throughout the summer um, that were specifically focused on the arts. And what was exciting was that you could bring local artists um, to, to show, but you also could bring in artists you know, from around the country and sometimes around the world. And that opportunity adds to... Um, the statement of like who's not in there mm -hmm. is that you know we have the opportunity to diversify our experiences and our understanding by um, seeing art from all over the place. So being a place that people want to come and show, right. and then we get the benefit of enjoying. It. Right, right. Yes. Keene, New Hampshire has a really groovy thing where they have um, throughout the whole city of Keene there's murals all over the town on the buildings. And the reason that they originally did it was to cut down on vandalism. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm not saying that vandalism is a huge problem here, but it's just so beautiful. And then they give out maps, especially like on you know college weekend, that you just go on the art tour, and it's mm -hmm. kind of cool. You, you're like in an apple field, and then oh, <laughs> there is a painting, <laughs> and it's it's pretty neat. Um, well, one of the things that would happen fastest would be like um, I I look at Wallingford Patch on the computer and that could be added on to if there was somebody from this group um, that you're forming that would feed into one of the patch. I don't even know I how long the patch came about or is there are people are there people pay into it for advertising? I don't know anything about it other than I do follow it. So the other one would be our website here at the library which which has library events but it doesn't have the town of it, so that would be an add-on, which would not be a difficult add-on. Those two things could happen relatively soon, I believe, because one of our major complaints is we hear about it after it's mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is that it is to have someone from, from your organization, WACA, 
who reports um, uh, on some regular basis to the record journal. So, so the communication, I, we think that that would be our fastest thing to happen. Okay. Jared had his hand up and then someone over here. I think the train station is a huge opportunity, and thinking a little more broadly, just public transportation. Um, when you look at uh, other towns up and down the train line, what you see is a lot of the, our communities are uh, uh, incorporating or they're expanding around the train stations, and that ends up developing other things around there. So I think we could really leverage the train station. Well, I had a really broad idea. Uh, I don't know if it was too specific, but several years ago, back before I had Catalyst, what we did was a really cool event with, um, it was like a sidewalk chalk painting. So we can, there's a lot of cool things that we could do. Everyone had their own little um, part of the sidewalk, and uh, it went all the way up Center Street. It was really cute. Uh, we had kids doing it, adults doing it, and then we would put them in, in, all in their own age category, and then there would be prizes. It'd, it'd be good to get, to get business in, just involved with that. Um, it was nice. Um, the one with the forum is a great way to advertise, too, because I'm not sure a lot of people in here are on it already. Mm -hmm. We were here about yeah, it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. We could also do a lot of, there's opportunity to do art for charities, mm -hmm. which um, a lot of the bigger cities do, um, whether it be homelessness or, you know, for whatever causes. Um, that somebody wants, but I, I, I think we have a lot of opportunity with so many artists to do art for charity. Mm -hmm. okay. That's my last one. The most important thing in an arts community is to get the non-arts people interested. Mm -hmm. That is the key. Is just the creative, it's always so that the creative community, the number of people are just too few. It's never going to be that, you know, that's going to be the majority. And it's key for a successful arts community to have the non-arts people to be involved. And the way they get involved is to make them feel included. So that has to be the main strategy. Yeah. I mean, funding is, um, maybe we didn't put it necessarily in the weakness, but if people don't have a place to endow to or an arts organization to fund, that distributes funds. Mm -hmm. um, it's just an opportunity to grow all of the current artistic organizations. And there is a community foundation, and a lot of organizations do that are not the same. It gets funds through them, but locally, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. an opportunity for non artists to give all of them. All right, you guys are on a roll. Other thoughts? A grant writer would be a great opportunity. I mean, I work at, at Southington Community Cultural Arts, and they, you know, were able to work out with the town to get their own building and, like, really make an arts community. And it's just in its, in its incubation right now. We, we are starting to fill classes. And, I mean, I keep saying every time I drive up to Southington, I wish this was in Wallingford. So, like, you know, they have a full-time grant writer on staff, and that is what funds them. They have um, a huge opportunity where they, they give t to the um, special needs community, and that keeps them alive, because that's where a lot of their grants are written, and that funds trickle down, because that's where the money's coming from. Grants and uh, getting the businesses involved you have to get sponsorships from local businesses. Oh, and doing things like competitions that involve children. Mm -hmm. So like how the Record Journal does the one for the advertisements. Mm -hmm. When you go to that um, award ceremony, there's hundreds and hundreds of people. And why? Because they're there for their children. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to get people who aren't art people mm -hmm. more involved is through children mm -hmm. and getting them involved in the arts first. Yeah. Good work. All right. Yeah. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I do think it's important that we round out our squad analysis. So um, we won't end here because it's not. Mm -hmm. Threats. What what 
what might threaten the arts in Wallingford? What might threaten our ability to promote arts and culture? What might work Lack against? Of funding. Lack of funding. Lack of funding. Great. Yep. Yeah. True. Jurisdiction and politics. Politics. Yeah, I was going to say politics as well. I, you know, we're talking about using spaces and that kind of stuff, and I worry that our yeah. town council is seems to be a little conservative when it comes to things like that. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> 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 no offense to anybody who might be on the downhill. Yes, but um, I'm sorry. No, I would also say maybe a lack of visibility mm -hmm. being kind of sandwiched between Hartford and mm -hmm. New Haven. Yeah, that's possible. It's also an opportunity too. Threats from threats from the legal department. Yeah. I've had three times that the legal department of this community has tried to shut down art activities. Yeah. Well, that's People should know that uh, in communities like New Haven, they don't look on Wallingford as a very admirable community for the arts and culture. Right. We have a reputation which I don't think is entirely merited, but there it is. I think um, a threat can be maybe, um, I'm trying to think of a good way to say it, but uh, ultimately when diverse viewpoints don't conversate and don't come together, um, then that can be a threat because you, folks who wouldn't normally talk because they don't agree on some of those issues may not realize what they have in common. So sometimes the conversation has to come out of that area, and so I think it can be a threat when you don't realize what you what you might be having in common, even though you might completely disagree. How do you come to that thing? Yeah. And basically, what you said, I was thinking communication. Um, if it's not done well and conveyed, will uh, affect the participation. Mm -hmm. so basically. If we sat here long enough, we could go all night because the ideas <laughs> will keep coming. Um, um, the markers are here, so if there's something that you were too shy to share, or you were, if you feel like it's uh, reiterating something that was already said, but you want to make sure it's up there, please take a minute to do that. I'm gonna, um, we're gonna kind of close out here with two exercises, um, but. It does include you kind of walking the wall there and just kind of refreshing your memory with what we talked about. Um, I'm going to give you each some dots, green sticker dots. And um, given the feedback that we've got, which is, which is incredible, I'm going to ask you to use those dots to kind of um, coalesce around some of the major themes, some of the things that we think might be most important out of this conversation. Given that our strengths really focused on a lot of organizations and groups, let's not use our dots to vote for each of our favorite groups because that's not going to be terribly productive for today. I think we're just going to all say that they all win and promoting the arts means that every single one of those organizations gets represented as do all the ones that we didn't mention. So um, if you want to vote for a strength that does, is not sort of tied to one specific group or place or event, great. Um, but I'm going to give you the rest of the dots to kind of use. Um, I think you'll find that the opportunities are very, very much a draw for voting. But you may feel like we really need to focus on one of those weaknesses or keep one of these threats in consideration. Okay, so everyone's going to get five dots. It's going to get a little crowded. It's okay to double up. I will know how to count the dots. Make sure that your voice is heard in that. Um, so again, we're going to do strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. We're not voting on what is our... Okay. <laughs> 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 Although I love you. <laughs>
even though you have people with diverse social ideas and economic, social, socioeconomic ideas, of, art will bring, we're hoping that art will bring everybody together, okay? I don't care whether you're poor, you're rich, or, you know, different religions, different colors. There, there's some central themes, and that's one thing that we want to really create here. So, um, it, it, so we hope that that's what's going to happen, okay? And our, our little group is not myself and Allison and, and Liz and Jane and Tarn and Mary Ellen. It's all of us now, okay? That's what this is really going to be. It's important to manage expectations because when you, a lot of you leave this room, you might be all excited. We got started. We all have day jobs. So I was in Montreal, Canada this morning at a meeting, and I came down here. Allison was involved in meetings all day. Jane. So as we get this going, we'll be able to organize ourselves, get more energy, and it, it'll pick up momentum, and we'll get things done more efficiently and on a quicker time scale. So you've got to be a little patient when we start this. So um, what we want to do is we're going to digest all this, and we're going to put this out to everyone, okay, once we digest this. So we have your email addresses. Uh, we're going to do follow-up meetings. Um, maybe we'll, we'll let everybody know when the next meeting is. I'm figuring, I want to keep the, we need, we need to keep the momentum going, okay? We don't want to let everybody go and let that idea and that energy uh, subside. So uh, I expect to have meeting another meeting probably within a, the next two months. So we'll let everybody know. We'll be organized. We'll have probably twice as many people in the room at that time. Our agenda will be a little bit more of a, uh, uh, a forward-thinking agenda, okay? And how we want to organize ourselves once we digest all this information. And you're all part of this, okay? Every, everybody is part of this organization. And whatever level you want to be involved with, okay? So we need all of your energy and your ideas and your enthusiasm. Um, so if... Um, and, and I, I think in the long run, it would be wonderful to have festivals and activities going on every week, all over town. Because it's by, and I know we're thinking big, that might be 10 years down the road, but it starts someplace. And it's all about creating a culture in town so that Wallingford is known for, for these types of things. And people from all over the state and all over the country, they remember, you know, Wallingford. And, you know, you have all these people coming to Choate, and they go to places, and they pass the word. We have a wonderful community. We're very fortunate. Not everybody has the infrastructure and the resources that we have. A lot of people, you know, it's, you, so we have that, and that's a great start. So we just need to organize that and keep that momentum going. So uh, if anybody has any questions, in the email that we'll get out to you, and if, give us a few weeks to organize this. Uh, we do have a, an email address. I think it's wakaforall at gmail.com, if I remember off the top of my head. So we'll get that out to you, uh, and I think one of the most important things is we're going to get a web page up so that we have a depository and a central communications link for everybody to communicate with. Um, so that I think those are some of our initial uh, uh, ideas. Okay, so are there any questions before we break up our first initial meeting? And everybody, you know, I, I, one thing I really enjoyed when Allison started out the conversation tonight and we started with uh, the, the SWOT analysis, and, or even before that, what is art, and we started out a little bit slow. I noticed once people started talking and feeling comfortable, and feeling connected to each other, you have all that energy, you have those thoughts and ideas and that passion, and it's nice to start to see you that you're comfortable giving all that, giving those ideas out. That's what it's all about. So I really hope you have a lot more exchange and just you know uh, a lot of energy and synergy among us. So if anybody doesn't have any questions, if you do, contact one of us. Hopefully, wait a few weeks and we'll get that information out. You'll have a connection. Um, have a wonderful evening. <laughs>